Hey everybody, it's Garden Jen. Uh, today is um, another Sabbath day for me, and it's a beautiful day. And there's been a lot that's gone on in the garden in the past week, so I thought I'd share that with you. It's just really cool. So this is my um, first bed that has corn in it. It's uh, glass gem corn, and you can see how tall it's gotten. It's a lot different than last week's video. Um, a lot, lot taller. So it's kind of cool. And then, of course, the weeds have gotten taller, too. <laughs> Anyways, my irises have bloomed. Remember last video? I didn't have any buds yet. Now the irises have finally bloomed. So it's really cool. I still only have one rose that's uh, going. This is uh, Peace Gold, I think, is, is the name of this one. Peace Rose or something like that. But my other roses have not uh, started growing yet. And then, of course, I have... um milkweed um, growing and I leave these guys in here uh, as long as they're not competing with other um, plants because these help our monarch butterflies reproduce and feed so I leave the milkweed alone for the most part in this pot here I have replanted my lavender it's supposed to be temporary until I figure out where to put it um, the, it's kind of a weak plant I'll give it some fertilizer it's not doing the greatest at the moment but we'll see if it bounces back and this is the carrots that I had uh, planted from my winter sown jug. Over here I noticed this the other day. This right here, this is chamomile that it reseeded itself from the pot that was originally sitting here. I showed you the pot uh, the other day and I'll show it again to you later. But um, that's what this is and I was like, oh cool, really, really neat. And then I have some flowers planted in here. Um, again these cages and it's kind of hard to see because I do have some weeds in here but I didn't want to disturb them too much um, I have um, if you can see it right here and then I don't see where the other one is it's over in here somewhere I have um, sweet potatoes planted so that's what these are for is to mark the spots where those are because they're gonna start vining out eventually if they make it and um, I just needed to know where they're at to begin with and then of course I got a grape there and then a grape over there that's gonna climb up here so that's what's going on in this bed and then the tires are potatoes I have one to two pl potatoes planted in each of my tires there and that pot there that's the pot that's got the chamomile in it that was sitting right here so and like I said it receded itself so that was really cool and then this is my parsley that came back I have it with a tire around it just so we don't step on it because it's right in the walkway and I just don't want to be transplanting it right now I'm done transplanting for a while so I just protected it with a tire <clears throat> and then this is my bee balm that came back um, I've already taken some cuttings from it to try to uh, get some more to grow because it doesn't get very big but I need to uh, harvest a lot uh, for different medicinal purposes so I'm going to try propagating more plants and then this bed is new since last time and I had that potato or the tomato bed there that I showed you with the different uh, cages this is new we finally got this done it has mostly flowers in it um, so the pollinators will be really happy because we got flowers I also have some amaranth up here where Sarah's at this is amaranth here and then um, these are winter sown coxcombs and then in this container here um, these are peanuts that I have um, grown um, in there there's there's three different peanuts in there I, th I think three or four I can't remember exactly how many nuts I planted in there but anyways the way the peanuts grow is they shoot up the the, the flowers and everything and then those go back down into the soil and grow the peanuts so I'm gonna grow the the roots are gonna grow in there for now and then I haven't decided if I'm gonna transplant them when they get a little bit bigger or just leave them because they they uh, put their roots down into the soil anyway so it's not like they're gonna be too root bound in there but we'll figure that out when we get to that point last year I had a terrible time with rabbits um, they didn't get much taller than that before rabbits ate them so that's that now these jugs here, they're about what's left of my winter sown jugs. If you've been watching my journey this year, you know I've done around 200 jugs and these are what's left. And I have my corn back there that I had reseeded. 
I told you about that last time. I'll take you over there in a little bit. So, but that's all that's left. Everything else has been planted finally, which is good because I have a major surgery coming up and uh, right in the middle of, of gardening season. So I was just glad I was able to get my garden in before my major surgery. So I just praise the Lord for that. So I'm going to turn you around here and hopefully my uh, shadow doesn't get in the way because this garden's on the east and I'm standing on the west. Alright, so this is my original herb bed. And you can see that 11 bomb's gotten a lot bigger. And then I ha have that one there. I had moved it. It was sitting over there in that area. And I br just brought it over here. I use a lot of 11 bomb too. And then I got this here just to mark an area. I have mullein planted here and here. I had some here, but they died. But mullein is, um, you can find them out in the wild. It's a very good plant for medicinal purposes. But because I don't know what's out in the wild, um, you know, we get a lot of people who spray chemicals and things with airplanes and stuff nearby. So I'm not sure what the drift is. I like to be able to control my consumption of chemicals as much as possible. So I'm growing it in my own garden so I know exactly what's been on there. So anyway, that's mullein. And then this is valerian, and you can see it's starting to go to flower. And these have some really pretty flowers, and they smell pretty good too. And then I have stinging nettle back here. And this guy, you do have to be careful of if you're aware of nettles at all. They do sting. Um, this uh, fine hairs that they have on their, their um, stems and leaves. But after you dry them or cook them, they don't have that stinging effect anymore. So I keep them in a pot because they're an invasive species. Um, so I keep them contained in there. And as long as you cut the seed heads off before they, you know, fall all over or whatever, they stay contained for the most part. And then uh, this is new. This was winter sown. This is Pastel Yarrow. And I have its counterpart at the end of the bed here. This is Zan chamomile. It's supposed to be a, a giant chamomile, but when I'm looking at it, it doesn't look any bigger than a regular chamomile. So, and then my chives, they come back year after year. It's hard to get rid of those things. And then in the pots um, where I did have mugwort and buckwheat for the last two years, they didn't receive themselves. It was just weeds in there. So I pulled out the weeds and added more flowers, again for pollination. Then my white whorehound, this is the old plant, and then I planted new there. This is uh, echinacea, and I have new echinacea going in. It's a different color, <clears throat> so that'll be neat. Um, I don't think I planted it yet. I don't see it, but I don't see the buckets either. So <laughs> anyways, this is the other yarrow, and I've pulled it, I've, I've thinned it out a little bit because it, it grows like tendrils out like a mint and things do but it's easy to um to counteract because it's really shallow roots that easy you, they're easily pulled up but this guy here will get about this tall really really tall lush plant beautiful plant uh, this is blue hyssop and i just planted some more i do have some pink hyssop that i'm trying to grow this year and we'll see how that goes in the back here, I have, um, oh boy, I can't remember what those are. Uh, I think they're squash. I didn't label them. I was running out of room for squash, so I think that's my butternut squash right there. And then I tried seeding. I have fennel and then caraway that I tried direct sowing, and I haven't seen any growth yet besides the weeds, so I don't know. This is sage that came back. Uh, this is an onion, and then I planted some of my lettuce around it just because I had extra lettuce. That's my lettuce bed there, and you can see it's kind of full. And then I have some kale on the end there. But anyway, so I just put lettuce around there. I'm supposed to have a fig tree in there, but it hasn't come back yet, so I don't know. There's another sweet potato vine. <clears throat> and then another lemon balm. And then on both sides of the lemon balm, I have um, two pumpkins that I'll grow up here. I'll have a lot of pumpkins this year. And then I have Kentucky Wonder Beans along this side of the trellis. And on the this trellis here, this is a walkway. I've only planted on the one side of the trellis. <clears throat> and 
this trellis it's not really a walkway so I've utilized both sides I have on this side I have lima beans down there and then this is a type uh, one type of pulping on this side and then on the other side these are uh, cherry tomatoes uh, bumblebee variety that's actually a indeterminate and if I remember correctly they, they are a vine type so they'll utilize this side of the trellis and then the same over here double planting I have um, these are the purple yard long beans I can't remember the variety name I did not tag it and then on this side these are azuki beans so that's gonna be kind of neat this is my other winter sown carrots with some leaks in it you can see the difference in growth in just a week um, my strawberry tower I had to take one layer off because I didn't put the holes in it good enough so that layer was not draining into that layer so this layer was starting to die so I took them off which is one of the good things about having them in individual crates like this is you can move them around if you want <clears throat> but anyways so this is my strawberry tower and then in the top I have this is savory this is my pink hiss up for now if it gets pretty big which I'm hoping it will it, it'll be moved and then I have snapdragons there and then snapdragons in the top of that brings in big pollinators and then of course my um, these are my sunflowers and then I have some leeks planted there and this is the corn that I had replanted when the first uh, batch had rotted and this is only a week's worth of growth so that's how much these things grow in a week's time it's awesome so I have to figure out where to plant these I have three different corns in my garden and they have to be separated um, by a good amount at least uh, to get uh, where they stay in more of a true uh, corn per their own bunches now they will cross pollinate because I don't have like a yard, uh, mile or two miles difference between the two or the three varieties but um, for more of a effect they will be separated all right back over here because I got a couple other things to show you over here these are my hydrangeas so and then I have mint this is a chocolate mint you can see how much it's grown and then my spearmint all right and this is my potato bed and the reason these are here is just to mark this spot because this is actually a low spot in the ground there's it's, it's not a solid area it's filled with uh, straw and leaves so you don't want to accidentally step in it because you could twist an ankle or something so that's why these are here is to just to mark this low spot for for your eyes so you don't step there all right so back over around this side this is the original uh, tomato bed that I showed you guys last time that I was just starting and so I have purple ponderosa tomatoes um, with I think I have five different types of dills I got a lot through a trade swap and I'm really excited about the seed swap so I have different d dills planted along here just to help with the um, uh, pollinators and keep other pests away and things like that so I got them going on and then I have these are garlics and I don't tend to harvest my garlic I just let them be in here to um, dissuade on any other pests that we might get in here so they just are around here happy happy and then like I said these are the jugs that I have left I have some celery I had replanted some sunflowers because they didn't do too well but now they're doing just fine we got beautiful sunflowers going on so I'll plant them probably next week when they grow a little bit more <clears throat> And then um, my peppers, let me get out of my peppers here. They're not quite ready yet. Peppers take a long, long time to grow in the northern states. See, they're just starting to get there because they need the warm, warm weathers. And right now, it's been touch and go with warm weather. So that's what's going on that side. Then on this side, I just got this bed planted yesterday. These are all Brussels sprouts, and then I left these guys here. These were originally here. They're reseeds from the sunflowers I had last year. So that's what's going on there. Then we have kohlrabi that's still growing. It's not ready to be winter, uh, transplanted yet. <clears throat> and then back there along the pallet fence, 
I have um, purple, cal purple cauliflower as well as uh, broccoli back there. And then I let my rhubarb go to seed just because I've never seen that happen before. And the pollinators really like it. It's a flower that they can come and enjoy until everything else blooms. And then in this bed, um, I have, I don't see my, my tag, but I believe this is purple cabbage in this bed here. And I also have garbanzo beans. They're really tiny. Let's see if I can get you closer. Really, really delicate pink flowers. They're really cute. So I'm not sure how big garbanzo bean plants actually get. I'll probably Google it and see. And then I have, um, these are snow peas and sugar snap peas. And then um, this is another type of pole bean there. This is my sweet corn that I finally got in. And if you saw the, the buckets back there, how I grew them, I just took the whole um, clump out of the jug and set it right in the ground. So I have six jugs. I have one, two, three, four, five, and six, where I just took the clump out of the jug and boom, right in the ground. And it works out fine that way. You don't have to separate them or anything. They actually do better that way. That way, these guys pollinate each other. Those guys pollinate each other. You know, they grow up right and tight and they, lo they really, really enjoy that. So I haven't had to worry about, um, you know, trying to separate them, put them in rows or anything like that. I just clump plant them, works for me. And then in the front we have, um, these are cantar bush beans. I have broccoli planted here. And then um, some more purple cauliflower, uh, some colobus cabbage, which is uh, kind of like a, a pear shape or a really unique shaped cabbage. Um, it's a red cabbage. And then broccoli there, and then my asparagus there. And then this is my other bean bed. These are all bush beans. I have um, different varieties. Like I have some Vermont cranberries, some Jacob's cattle, um, Triumph de Fancy or something like that. <laughs> Purple teepees. And then I don't remember what these are right off the top of my head. I think these are Jacob's cattle too. Yep, they're Jacob's cattle too. And then I have marigolds and dill companion planted in here. So that's what's going on on this side. And then of course I love to overseed just because I never know how my seeds are actually going to come up. So this is carrots. I just threw a bunch of seed on there and well we got carrots growing so that's really cool. And then I'll take you out here briefly to show you what's happened since last week. Remember all these jugs here? They were right there, but I strung them all up. I have three strings of of these jugs that after a while I'll figure out where to put them. But for now, they're out of my garden. My husband's been working on getting the new duck coop built, so that's what's going on here. I'm so excited. Again, this enclosure is going to be made a lot bigger. He's taking this whole wall and bringing it out up against the garage here. So he's building the coop and that. And my elderberries are just doing really, really, really good. So excited about that. <coughs> so that's what's going on here in just a week's time. Uh, I mean, these lettuces, if I wanted to, and I was very careful, I could actually start harvesting some of the, some of the leaves because these are leaf lettuces. They're not head lettuce. And, uh, and uh, enjoy some of the leaves for lettuce. I don't know about you guys. You can leave me a comment below. But... This right here, this is a spinach. This is Bloomsdale spinach. It's supposed to be a long-standing spinach, meaning that it holds out. It doesn't bolt really fast, but every year it bolts on me almost as soon as I plant it. So I'm not going to be getting this one again. If anybody else has a better spinach that does good in, corn, in um, cooler climates but doesn't bolt quickly either, um, leave it in the comment section below because I'd really love to grow some spinach. So anyways, that's my rant on that today. So, but otherwise, I'm really excited about the growth I'm seeing. I'm really excited about the progress I've been able to make in just a week's time, getting the plants from here into my garden beds and seeing how much the Lord has blessed my efforts here. So um, I just thank you so much for keeping up with me on my updates. 
and I will share another update soon on how things are going. This is Garden Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Bye bye everybody.